Well, good Saturday morning to you. We're going to be looking at our last two days of devotions today, so we'll be ready for Sunday's devotion when we begin tomorrow. Uh, Friday and Saturday's devotion is day 20 and day 21. And the focus today is you've got to have knowledge if you're going to be able to do the right kind of thinking. Uh, so we're going to be looking at that. The Bible says uh, in Hosea chapter 4, verse 6, in fact, God is saying, my people are destroyed from a lack of knowledge. The people of God didn't know what God had put in their hands for them to use to be successful. They have fallen away from God because they failed to read his word and to really know what the knowledge is. What do you and I need to know? And how important is it for us to take time to grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ? Now, the idea of grace is going to be a surprise when I give you the scripture that we're looking at there. But I hope it'll be helpful to you as I know it's been to me. But first of all, let's pray. Let's ask the breeze of the Holy Spirit to blow across our hearts, that his light will open our eyes to see what he has to say to you and to me. And as Jesus said so many times, let him who has ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit has to say. Let's pray to him. Father, I thank you for this day. And Lord, for many of us, this has been a long day of work and getting up early and going to work and coming in. And Lord, we've been perhaps tired and weary. And today is a day that we can maybe relax a little bit, but then tend to the things around the house that we need to get done and prepare for a day tomorrow when we can focus on worshiping you and loving you and those that can to be at church, Lord. Father, thank you for this moment in time. Give us some strength in our hearts and minds that will go with us through this day. In Jesus' name, amen. So God said to his nation, his people Israel, who have fallen so far away from him, you're destroyed by a lack of knowledge. What is knowledge? Knowledge is knowing what to do with the things you've got. Uh, yesterday, I had uh, uh, begun a uh, work to record some records onto CDs. I had my record player. I actually have a CD recorder that I could, you know, connect the record player to, but I had never used it like that before. I needed knowledge. So, yeah, I went online and I went looking and I found uh, a manual uh, that uh, gave me the exact knowledge that I needed and I was able to take a record, and now that record is on a CD, and I actually learned how to type in the title for each song. Now, all of that knowledge was a sense of power because it gave me the ability to use something that I had. And without the knowledge, I wouldn't have known what to do with it. Well, think about this. This Bible that we have right here is absolutely filled full of knowledge. Is the knowledge about God. It's the knowledge of what to do in certain situations. I learned a huge bit of information this week. I didn't know what Isaiah 26, 3 was actually saying, he whose mind is stayed on thee, he whose imagination keeps focused on God, that's how you stay in perfect peace. And all of a sudden that knowledge made sense. So many times, I find myself imagining the bad things that can happen, imagining what if this happens and what if that happens, and the result is stress and anxiety. But then when God renews my mind and said, says, Shelby, why don't you imagine what I can do in that situation? Why don't you imagine how I can change things and turn things around? Or why don't you imagine how I can give you strength to even go through it? That was a huge bit of information. Something else this Bible tells us, it says grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. And one of the things we have to think about is 
We spend all this time watching television and magazines and doing the things we want to do. One of the habits perhaps we ought to consider is, could we exchange one of those hours in watching those three shows we watch on the evening, just exchange one of those hours to spending time focusing on the information that God has for us in his word. Simple thing. God says you're destroyed because you have a lack of knowledge. Well, two scriptures that we have looked at and are looking at in these two days of devotion, day 19 and 20, uh, I'm sorry, sorry, day 20 and 21, yeah. Day 20 says, if any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault. What does that mean, without finding fault? Have you ever had uh, somebody, uh, maybe a child comes up to you and they ask you something and your response to them is something like, well, you should have known that. Or maybe uh, your wife is asking you something and you say to her, you should have known that. That's the opposite of what this is saying. This is saying when you go to God and you ask for wisdom, God is going to do it. He's going to help you out without blaming you or finding fault by making you feel like you should have known this. He's a gracious father. And when the Bible says grow in the grace of Jesus, it means that we, of course, should treat others in the same way, but we should also know that God is lovingly available for us that when we pray and when we read the Bible, He's not going to make us feel bad or he's not going to be condescending to us. He's going to give us wisdom without trying to find fault and we should have known that kind of thing. Now, one important aspect of this, this says if any of you lacks wisdom. Wisdom is knowing what to do with knowledge. In other words, I could read this information right here, but unless I apply it and go in there and begin to figure out exactly how to do it and put my fingers on the knobs and realize I have to push this button when the song is over so it'll begin track number two on the CD, wisdom is knowing what to do with your knowledge. And sometimes God can't give us wisdom because we haven't spent time even getting the basic knowledge. I know one thing. Now that when I'm in a bad situation or somebody else is in that, I'm going to encourage myself or them, use your thinking to imagine how God can take care of this situation. That'll help you have peace. Wisdom is knowing what to do with the knowledge that you have. And so... You know, uh, the one of the emphasis in this is the emphasis of our desire to obey God. And Jesus made mention of that in the sower and the seed, where he says, be careful how you're listening. If you're asking God for wisdom, you need to be listening with a heart that is good and honest and wanting to do what God says. You're willing to hold fast. You just say, Lord, tell me what to do. And when he tells you, you hang on to it. You do it. And so asking God for wisdom should have a presupposition, presupp presupposition in our hearts to say, yes, tell me what to do and I'll do it. Now, the second scripture, which is day 21, says those who get wisdom do themselves a favor and those who love learning will succeed. Here is a verse that puts these two things together. One is wisdom. Lord, help me know what to do with the knowledge that I have. And the other is those that are trying to learn the knowledge, they're going to be the ones to succeed. Have you ever had a test at school and you pray, Lord, help me do good on this test? I've done that a million times, it seems. And many times in desperation because of one very obvious fact, I did not study like I should. 
I didn't spend time learning the information. I did not spend time learning the knowledge. And so now I'm asking God to give me wisdom to do something I haven't even learned. I haven't even fed myself on the information I haven't studied. The Bible says those who love learning will succeed. And so the emphasis on having mental health is that we have to constantly be nurtured with the knowledge of Jesus, the knowledge of what Jesus says, and then say, God, give me wisdom to understand and apply the knowledge that I'm learning by reading your word. So the challenge for us to consider is if we want to say, blessed are those who find wisdom, blessed are us when we find what God says about how to, about his promises, his strength that he wants to give us. When we're blessed with that, it's because we have learned and we've gained understanding by the knowledge that we've grown in. And so the verse we close in is the one we started with earlier on. Grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. Grow in the grace. You don't know everything. If God is going to bless you with his wisdom, you need to realize that you've got to have some knowledge for him to work with. Read the Bible. And if you're going to grow in, in the knowledge of Jesus Christ, then you're going to have to think about your lifestyle and what is a time of day, even 15 minutes, really 15 minutes to grow in the knowledge of what God's word says. Let's pray. Father, our hearts are blessed as we think about a healthy mind that is filled with the power of instructions from your word to know what you have given us to use and then for you to give us wisdom to know how to apply the knowledge and the grace that we're growing in. Thank you for your grace. Thank you that you love us. You don't want to penalize us. Lord, you love us and you want to build us up. Help us not to be destroyed because of a lack of the very things we need to know. Lord, I love you, and I just pray for Kathy Torres as she is caring for her brother in the medical field there, that as they're caring for him, Lord, we pray for success. Lord, we pray for MJ to be feeling better. Lord, we're grateful for Jenna, and her pregnancy has gone so much better in delivery this time. We pray that that will continue. Lord, be with Miss Essie, who is at home and enjoying the listening to the worship services. Thank you, Lord, for Janet and Diane and others, Lord, that are caring for so many of our people. For Miss Essie, that is so glad to have a DVD of the worship service, that she can be able to listen and at least feel connected somewhat to those in our church family and help her, Lord, as she's got to make decisions about what to do with the years that will be coming as far as staying in the nursing home. And Lord, we just pray for, Lord, uh, our church family, as we live our lives, that Lord, we will grow in your grace, knowing that you love us, that we'll come to you, ask for strength and for wisdom to use the knowledge we already have, and then to be eager to learn more, that you can show us the path of life and peace. Lord, we love you and thank you for this week as we've focused on getting our minds healthy with you. And now, Lord, be with us as we prepare tomorrow to begin a study on becoming healthy in our emotions, to think about what your word says about having not just peace in our mind, but peace in our spirits. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you. I hope you have a wonderful day and uh, look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Sunday school at nine, we'll be going through the study of Rick Warren at nine o'clock. And then the service begins at 1015 with wonderful worship and prayer and praise and a message from God's word. God bless. Bye-bye.